Every little bit of space is precious. Small streets, big cars. Parking space is holy. No space for a bed. Normal houses don't have a basement. Hey guys and girls, it's Kathy Cat. Today we are going to talk about the five things that surprised me about the lack of space in Tokyo. Number five. Every little bit of space is precious. No matter how small a piece of land is, you can definitely build something on it. Sometimes when a road comes like this and another crosses and there's just that little triangle left at the corner, in the West we just leave it. In Japan, this one is enough space to maybe fit a tiny, tiny building on it or maybe a vending machine. There's always, always something you can do with space and sometimes I'm really surprised how creative the architects here in Tokyo are in order to create a building on a minimal amount of space. In uh, near our company, there's probably the smallest pizzeria Italian restaurant I have ever seen. It is literally only a little bit bigger than the door, but it's very, very long because that's the piece of land that that uh, building or the architect had in order to fill. So it's literally just like a tiny hallway. And it's sometimes fascinating how little space is absolutely used to the absolute maximum. Number four. Small streets, big cars. Now the streets in Tokyo are fairly narrow. What then again surprises me though is that some people drive very big cars, not the kind of like Hummer size of American cars or limousines. I've never seen any of those in Tokyo actually, but you have, for example, very, very small roads and then kind of bus cars. Those ones are very popular for families. It's like a little bus. Instead of driving a van, it's more like a, a mini bus that they're driving. They're very compact, but at the same time also kind of big. And I am absolutely astonished how people do the parking and going around the corners in these little buses. I don't understand. Why? Number three. Parking space is holy. In Japan, in order to actually be able to buy a car, you have to prove that you have a designated parking space for that, which means if you have a house, you have to show that this house actually has a parking space where you will be able to park the car in order to actually be able to go and buy that car. So if you don't have that space on your housing ground, you need to go and have like a rental parking slot where you rent again a space. That's also how people get around the issue of people parking on the side of the road, which is illegal. So only people where, for example, the driver is still in the car, you can like park on the side of the road, but generally you can't do that. So parking space is actually very, very expensive. So if you rent a parking space, you have to have a monthly fee and sometimes that is as high as someone else's rent. Or if you go to a different area of town where you generally wouldn't have a parking space, they are usually between the houses, little slots that are rented out. You park your car there, a little barrier goes up so you can't leave and everything is just around the issue of space. So parking is very expensive if you come to Tokyo, don't think of driving. I really don't recommend it. Two, no space for a bed. Some rooms in Tokyo are so small that there actually isn't really enough space for a bed. I mean, of course, you could put and squish squish a single bed in there, but then there wouldn't be anything else you can do with the room because you just have enough narrow space around the bed to walk around. Sometimes you won't even have that. In that case, that's when the Japanese tradition of having futons actually comes in handy. A friend of mine, that's the same thing with her. She had her room, she had her desk and everything in it. In the evening, she go to the to the wardrobe, open it, take out her futon, roll it out on the floor and sleep on that every single night. That's how she went around the space issue and she could also put other furniture items into her room instead of just making it a room in where she sleeps. Number five, normal houses don't have a basement. Now with this lack of space, I expected everyone to have just a basement. You know, you go downstairs and then you store things downstairs or you have an extra room downstairs or anything like that. No, that's not the case, which really surprised me. So at first thought, maybe it's because, you know, of earthquakes, basements are harder to do. The humidity in Japan is very high. So the chances of actually the whole basement just rotting and getting moldy are very high. So again, not advisable really. So a couple of laws and rules that actually make it hard to get yourself a basement. And I must say, I don't know 
anyone who does. Generally, the big companies and the big business building and stuff, they might put a garage in there. They have obviously very, very different rules applied to them than a normal person who just wants to have their own house. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a bias and it's a conflicting things that I hear about space in Tokyo and I'm always surprised and there's always new things that surprise me. What else surprises you about space in Tokyo? Be sure to leave us a comment down below. Also, we are giving out more facts about Japan and Tokyo out to you. If you love that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button now to join the team. Don't forget, leave a like on the way out and I'll catch you soon for more videos on Ask Japanese. Bye!